This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. In 1803, at the time of the transfer of Louisiana from France to the United States, Europeans amounted to only a handful of strangers on the Great Plains, plying their trade and political ambitions among powerful Indian nations like the Comanches, who may have numbered 40,000 by the 1770s. The impact of these few, however, was immense, bringing short-term benefits to the Indians, but also long-term catastrophe. The three main impacts were horses, guns, and disease, especially smallpox. The introduction of the horse from Spain's New Mexico colony in 1650 transformed the world of the pedestrian hunters. The Spaniards actually prohibited trade in horses and guns, not wanting mounted Indian warriors on their doorstep. But horses were surreptitiously traded by the Pueblo Indians, and by the 1650s nearby Apaches were making full use of this new asset. After the Pueblo Revolt of 1680, which threw off Spanish control for twelve years, large numbers of horses were taken or traded by the Indians of the southern Great Plains. Horses proliferated there in a physical setting that was not so different from their places of origin, North Africa and the arid interior of Spain. The lure of horses and a liberated life as mounted bison hunters pulled Indians south toward the source. By 1710, the Comanches had migrated from the northern Great Plains via the central Rockies onto the horse-rich grasslands of the southern plains. Within a generation, they were a fully mounted society. They drove the Apaches to the fringes of the region and established a trading and raiding empire that stretched from the Arkansas River to the Rio Grande. Similarly, in the second half of the 18th century, the Kiowas moved from the Black Hills to the southern Great Plains, where they made a necessary accommodation with the Comanches and fully engaged in the horse trade. Soon after, several bands of the Cheyennes and Arapahoes relocated from the Black Hills to the upper Arkansas Valley. There they became middlemen, acquiring horses from the Comanches and funneling them to the Indians of the northern plains. Horses reached the Pawnees in the central Great Plains by 1720, and the Crows and Blackfeet in the northern Great Plains by 1740. The diffusion wave took about a century to wash over the entire region, but horses remained a scarce resource in the region's northern reaches because most perished in the severe winters, whereas an average Comanche family in 1800 owned 35 horses, a Blackfeet family was fortunate to have one or two. In fact, many Blackfeet families had no horses at all, and dogs remained the primary beast of burden. The attraction of the horse was irresistible. Distance was overcome. Mounted Indians could travel farther to locate bison herds or water, and they could trade and raid widely. Women no longer had to carry heavy loads. Many more bison could be killed by equestrian hunters, armed with bows and arrows, than by using traditional driving and pounding methods, though these continued among horse-poor Indians. Horses also allowed farming Indians like the Omahas and Pawnees to travel greater distances to the western bison ranges and to carry larger loads of meat and robes back to their villages. Conceivably, had they been given the time, the farming Indians might have made a full-blown transition to the hunting life just as the Crows and Cheyennes did in the late 18th century, but their agriculturally based religious ceremonies, which in their minds secured the annual cycle of life, would have made this difficult. The arrival of horses, however, also set in motion a series of changes that would prove destabilizing and even disastrous for the Indians. Horses needed constant care, especially the daily provision of forage and water. The same horses that had allowed the Comanches to rise to power were a real challenge to maintain. The Indians were obliged to move their settlements every few days because their horses left the surrounding grasslands grazed to the ground. In fact, the Comanches became horse herders, practicing pastoralism as much as bison hunters.